What's up guys? Here with an update video. Um, I discovered this effect late last night. It's good to experiment sometimes late into the night when it's dark. Um, this completely startled me, this discovery I made. And it blew me away. And I don't even know why I'm sharing this. I should be charging a lot of money to share this. Um, so this is just a heat sink piece of metal. Goes to my super sensitive LED receiver light with the special RF diodes. Goes to another heat sink. Just laying on the ground. I'll point this up so we can see it. And these are big jumbo LEDs. I believe they're like 10 millimeter. Now, this is the part that blows my mind. I will turn my transmitter on right here. You can see it clearly runs off the DC supply. I can also run it off a battery, which I've demonstrated. There's nothing in the transmitter. Nothing underneath it. Nothing under my desk. I've devoted two years of my work to this research. I don't screw around at all. I'm trying to perfect this device and create the most sensitive energy harvester devices in the world. That's one of the goals. So, as you see, we're consuming zero watts. Nothing is on. I'll turn the power supply on, which powers the transmitter. Transmitter is powered on. My 120 volt LED bulb lights wirelessly. This is lit just from an antenna. See, I touch it, I detune it, it goes out. That was another breakthrough. I no longer sell just the coils anymore because this planar antenna, this monopole antenna that's cut to match the frequency of the transmitter works better than any coil. And if you ground if you ground the uh, if you ground it, it'll get brighter. So in this case, I have the ground connection. The antenna goes to a rectifier, and the rectifier is what runs the light. And I ground the other AC side of the rectifier, and that it can run loads without without putting a load on the transmitter. I can receive more power than I broadcast. So there's the rectifier. One part of the AC side of the rectifier goes to the antenna. The other side of the AC part of the rectifier goes to a ground plane antenna or the or a ground connection itself. There's nothing in the antenna. And here's the crazy part. This little light is lit between two planes of metal when my transmitter is on. How is that possible? If anyone can explain that to me, I'd greatly appreciate it. We'll take a really close look at it. There's no hidden batteries anywhere. There's no bullshit. I wouldn't devote years of my life to this work to bullshit anyone. I have people telling me I'm faking stuff. I'm not faking anything. Have you ever heard of a radio receiver? Or the Moray valve? Or a crystal radio? I think my transmitter is putting out a different form of energy. I don't think it's an AC wave that's coming off of it. It's either a pulsed DC, or it's a scalar type of transmission, which comes in shock waves. Um, and what blew my mind is the efficiency of it. So I'll shut my light off, so you can see that this guy's glowing pretty bright. I will turn my transmitter down to super low power levels. And this is what absolutely blew my mind. Transmitter is at 6 volts. Consuming a little over 200 milliamps. Less than 5, less than 6 watt input. 
and the transmitter is actually consuming a little less than 6 watts because just idle my power supply consumes like 1 or 2 watts. So, this light is still lit when we're barely consuming any power. And notice how when I back up it come, it gets lit, but if I get too close it'll go out because I'm detuning it. Oh, if I touch it, it gets bright. And if I connect another lead to it, it should get bright. Eh, not really. It really likes it when I touch it, though. So if anyone knows how this is occurring, or how this works at such an efficient level, please let me know. So this gets me thinking. In theory, I'm going to crank the transmitter back up now. So in theory, I should be able to get just get special pieces of metal, or just regular pieces of metal, and I should be able to replicate this. I keep going, just another piece of metal, a rectifier, another piece of metal, and I, instead of it running the light, it'll be a bridge rectifier, bridge rectifier, bridge, I'll, I'll keep repeating this setup, and I'll combine the outputs of the bridge rectifiers, and there's no reason why I shouldn't be able to get much more power out than I'm inputting. And I'm far away from the transmitter. I'm a good like two or three feet. There's no way that's some form of normal energy transmission that's doing that. There's something new at play here, something interesting. Something else I forgot to show? My transmitter lights up my whole room with wireless lights. My transmitter can produce one wire lighting and wireless power. All these lights are lit. This is the lead that hangs down, that runs it all. I didn't even terminate that into the earth yet. All these lights are run with one wire and wirelessly. And I did disconnect them all late last night and this setup has no effect on what's down there so now I'll do another experiment I will get two more of these heat sinks put one here put one here and repeat the same experiment and see if there's any degradation in that one that I have not done yet and you will see I'll turn my light on so I can see what I'm doing. I will grab the leads. So I have, I will hook up the lead to the heat sink. I'll hook up this other light. It's lit, no problem. So that gets me thinking now. There's truly probably is no limit. Instead of running a light here now, I will add a bridge rectifier. So I'll just keep repeating that pattern on a piece of wood Metal, 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 wire, wire, rectifier, 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 and I'll combine all their outputs, and in theory, I should get way more power out than I'm inputting. That is mind-bending. The key is the diodes. You need the special diodes. You need 1N4148, and I believe the other ones I use are 1N4001. I use UF2008 and UF2000, oh, UF1007, I can't quite remember, 
but I'll probably list them in the description of this video. I'm just so damn busy lately. So, my theory behind how this works is there's either something similar occurring here to how the Moray valve worked, where he created such a sensitive energy detector, it was the environment itself that ran his electrical devices. So I was reading a lot of his work, and he created a germanium diode that was so sensitive he could get power, he could get electricity out of it, DC power, just from grounding it and hooking it up to an antenna. And I mean, this this is remarkable. In my case, I think the coil is acting as a stimulator for the environment, and the environment is what's running the load. That's one theory. Our one theory is it's actually receiving the power from the transmitter, which I don't think it is, because when these lights are on or powered, there's no electrical drain on the transmitter, which is very interesting. And when I add this amps coil I show in my earlier videos, I can just put it in the center here, vary the inductance, and those lights down there will get brighter or dimmer, as you can see. Let me zoom in on it and show you. Hopefully you can see that. They get brighter or dimmer when I vary the inductance. So that's something to experiment with. And I didn't even get sheets of copper either to try. That's just remarkable though how that happens. Absolutely remarkable. So what's occurring here I think is similar to how there's no limit to the amount of people that can tune into a radio. Something similar to how a crystal radio was powered by nothing than the radio signal itself. Or it was powered by the earth itself. Or a combination plus the exotic components in the diode. There's a conjugation of energy occurring here. The medium itself, or the ether, is what's powering our load. And in case anyone doesn't believe me, it's just a heat sink. Light is still lit. It's actually the length of wire that's running the light. It just gets brighter when I connect it to the heat sink. See that? Try and get that in frame. It also helps if they're a distance apart. I notice when you if you do this experiment. It's good to keep the pieces of metal far apart. So what I'm wondering now is does having it insulated help more? How close can I have them for the effects to still occur? Can I get them really close? And I did notice a dimming. Very slight but not by much. It's interesting touching one seems to put them both out so maybe I'd have to properly isolate them there definitely is some kind of interference occurring because as I move this that one gets dimmer so there is there is they can't be too close to each other kind of reminds me don't get in my bubble bro <laughs> Okay, now the question is how to maximize that effect. I have a ground wire coming off my heater here somewhere. I'll try and connect that. I'm going to have to bear with me, I'm untangling a wire. I do everything one-handed. Guys are probably going to hate me. You know what, fuck 